Welcome to the Develop Forum 2021. My name is Markus Berger and I would like to show you some deep dive around Develop Documents and how you can kickstart your digitalization with our Develop platform. So I have prepared a short agenda for that. We will first start with uh, the issues and the constraints we see, we see at our customers, at our clients. Then I would like to show you how to easily start your digitalization with Develop Documents and to extend an ex uh, existing system. Then we have a short view on some use cases, so you get a better feeling how you can work with developed documents. And finally, we just do a short summary on our session over here. So, where does developed documents push your digitalization? How can developed documents help you? So, you have seen the picture before, I think, I'm pretty sure. Business critical information is normally available but it's necessarily not available where you need it, how you need it, and when you need it. Because in many companies, we see that information is stored in several systems. Can be the ERP system, CRM, can be an existing ECM solution, file server, and so on. So searching for information, having the right information in the business context is an issue for users in organizations. That leads to several issues, other issues that we see. For example, you get multiple inbound channels that leads to or that lead to individual storage concepts. So beside the systems that we have just seen, which is a technical view on storing information, you get a user's view as well. So the user gets the information and what is the user doing? He's storing his information, emails in Outlook, documents in his local data storage, for example. That leads to duplicates of the same documents, you got different versions. So uh, the, the problem can be that user A is working with the same document, but from his local storage, and user B is working with the same document, but it's stored on his storage. So both are working on different versions. And that leads finally to OPEC processes, intransparent processes. Long story short, uh, it is finally informational chaos. This is exactly where developed documents supports you. From the inbound of documents and information through the structured storage of information, central structured storage, up to processing information and documents. So we have scan and import options, can be a scanning engine for paperwork, can be a connector to your mail system, to your ERP system. We classify the information that we import and based on the classification, we store it in the right business context, for example, into a customer folder. But not only that, on the other hand, we support you distributing the information in the right context. So making information searchable and then workable. For example, there were workflow with an existing document. And if that's all done, you can even go for the long-term storage, for the long-term archive, so that information is accessible in three, in five, maybe even in 10 years. So from another distance, from another view, you got the file share, you got office and email, you got paper, you got your ERP system, other line of business application. All these inbound channels deliver documents and they will be all stored in one central system. So forget about the information silos. There is only one silo you have to search for information. And there you find your document management workflow. You find the information you need in the business contact. Okay, but how can you easily start with developed documents? The first thing is you start with a so-called develop store, which is the entry point for the develop platform. You can see what's in the box, you got pricing information, you got uh, contractual documents, and you can directly book your personal develop documents tenant. Let's go for it. We jump into the develop store. And as mentioned, I would like to start with a system from scratch. So I choose managing documents as the area in the store, and then I can directly jump into develop documents. And you see that you get a lot of information here. Right away, you have screenshots to get a view on the look and feel of the software, pricing information. You get all the features at a glance, and you see it's a long list of features, so that it's a very powerful tool at the end. You get additional apps that might help you to increase your productivity around developed documents. And finally, you got contractual documents. So everything you need to know whether you want to book that service or not. 
If you have additional questions, you can just arrange consultation. We skip that. We go on with directly booking that tenant for us. So we will lead to the developed cloud now. I need a cloud account here. Um, if you don't have a cloud account, you can just create a new one. There is just a link uh, on the uh, bottom of the site. I have an account. I can just go on with the login. And there we go. I would like to create a new cloud account here. So not an existing one, new one. Create new one. Enter some information about my organization, contact details, region, amount of employees, and so on and so on. So just some basic information so we can get in touch with you, support you with your developed documents tenant. I say next. And then there comes, uh, there comes a small point, which is important if you have more than one tenant. You've got a test tenant, productive environment, development environment. So you can summarize these tenants into a so-called group. I have a predefined group over here. And then I just have to enter the address where my cloud tenant should be available in the future. I go for develop forum 2021. And you see directly below that field that the software or the system is directly checking whether this address is available or not. It's not available, so maybe I just add a short number. It's available. I click on next and get a short summary about what I'm just going to book here. I just set the, sex, uh, the, the, the checkbox there because I would like to be informed about updates and so on. And what's happening now is that the overall DMS system, so keep in mind, it's a complete cloud-based DMS system, is set up in the back. So uh, databases are loaded, um, the, the operating system is prepared, and so on and so on. There is no wizard, there is no installation that I have to take care of. And then I got to lead to my login again with my cloud account, and I'm directly forced or directly uh, routed to my new uh, cloud account that we just created. You see that in the address list, develop, minus, uh, develop forum 2021 minus MBR2, and that is the cloud account that we just set up. So now I have two chances to go on. I can configure the system on my own, or I use an initial configuration. In this specific case, I go for an initial configuration. So the system will start with some, some predefined settings, folder plan, uh, document types, folder types, and so on. So I don't have to take care of that. Important to know, if you choose such a template for your start, you can optimize and customize the template later on. So Starting with a template doesn't mean you have to stay with the template. You can customize it. You can create your own doc types. You can create your own folder types, addition it to the system that we started. As you see, it's working in the back end. Takes a while. And after it's finished, we just click on the button on the uh, bottom of the site. It's about to be completed. There we go. So start now means I will be forwarded to the starting screen and you see a lot of tiles over here. Every tile is a specific feature like search for example, like storage. And what I like to do now is I would just like to throw in a single first document. Keep in mind, we just started a few minutes ago setting up a complete DMS system. So I choose a document and then I just select a category and these categories are so-called document types, which are predefined based on the template I have chosen. So I enter some details. Keep in mind, it's a blank system, nothing in there, so it doesn't know anything about contacts right now. I just eat, uh, enter some properties. I go save. The document is uploaded, and I can directly show the item in the so-called document viewer. So from informing myself about the product via the develop store up to entering the first document in this new tenant, it just took me less than five minutes. And it's not only the part of um, creating a new tenant, it's also the part of um, adding functionality to an existing tenant. So let's jump in the develop store again. And in this case, I know for sure that I'm searching for invoice automation. So I can just enter the word invoice, it shows me some solutions, and I go for the so-called develop 
document reader invoice for automated invoice recognition. Again, I have all the information, screenshots, contractual information, and so on. We skip that. I go just on with continue to booking. And it's the same thing again. It's just leading me to the cloud. I have to enter. I'm still logged in as a user here. But in this case, I do not want to create a new cloud account. That's the difference. I choose an existing one because I want to add functionality. I say next, and then we get, again, a short summary. We subscribe, and in the back end, the system is again working on it, installing all the issues or the, the things that need to be used within that specific functionality. And as soon as that is done, I directly be led again to my starting screen. And again, you see different tiles here. Every and each tile is a single functionality, a specific feature. Right now, I have, when I counted right, I have 16 tiles in here. And after a refresh, again, it takes some time. Um, after a refresh, we should have 17 tiles because the additional functionality is added to my starting screen. So you see the information, the features were updated, refresh. And if you have a look at the tile where it says mappings right now, we will see a new tile, an additional one, invoice reader, business and I can directly jump in and I can directly see the user interface of that specific tile. Surely in both cases with the new tenant I just set up and the additional uh, app I added, both of them need to be configured, need to have some configuration but nevertheless keep in mind we just set up a complete cloud-based DMS in less than five minutes and we added functionality in less than two minutes. So that's quite simple to kickstart your digitalization. Another topic we are taking care of to, to support you with the digitalization is knowledge transfer. So a system is only as good as the users accept it. So finally, there, are, there, are, or there is a, a workload around uh, knowledge transfer as well. So what we offer within the Develop Academy are some e-learnings for your administrators so they can take care of your folder plan, the folder structure, information structure, and as well as the users, so they get used to the software and how to use the software and a basic uh, understanding of what is document management. Where can document management help them? Okay, where can document management help your users? First thing, before we start into the deep dive of the use cases, I would like to, sit, to show you a bit more complicated configuration. So we have started with a, with a system from scratch and we started with a template. In that specific case, I jumped over to a complete new tenant. It's a demonstration tenant we use for customer visits, customer demos. And within that tenant, we have a complex configuration. And please do not be afraid. This is not a view a normal user will become. It's just because I'm in the admin group, so I have a look, I can have a look at the configuration. So let's jump in so you can see how we can customize the information architecture, the structure of my information within develop documents. We just go configuration, choose document management, and there we got a configuration overview. And you will see on the left side we have several settings, data sets, properties, categories. Categories, for example, is the part of folder plan, uh, sorry, of uh, folder types, of document types, and all that leads to the so-called structure. And if we jump into the structure, you can directly see we got different uh, folders, like the customer file folder, we have a supplier file folder, and within these folders, we have different document types. So in the customer file, for example, we have customer information, um, we have proposal, and all these document types belong to that specific folder. We even have subfolders to structure the information, maybe based on orders, maybe based on projects. We have supplier files. And as you see, in the supplier file, we have different document types. And that is the structure we are talking about. You can go for personal files, you can go for car files, project files, machine files, all depending on your individual needs, on the needs of your organization. And such folder types can even be combined. So you can create project files as subfolders of customer files, for example. 
What does it mean from a user's perspective to work with such a folder plan? Let's imagine my role now is I'm a customer service manager and I'm responsible for the customer Mason and Taylor. And our main target is to get all the information around Mason and Taylor and of course other customers at a single point. So we, want to have, we would like to have a 360 degrees view on our clients and therefore we work with so-called customer folders. What happens normally, I've talked about the, the different inbound channels. In this specific case, I received an email, for example, with an attachment saying there is a new address for, a, for an order of that specific client. So again, I would like to have a complete documentation about all the, 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 uh, the communication with that client. So this document should be part of the customer file. So what I'm going to do is now I search for the customer file. So I choose the category first and you see that the search mask changes. So it offers me the properties that belong to the specific category, in that case, customer file. So I can choose the customer name. We only have a few in. Mason and Taylor is the one I'm searching for. And I can just go just for search. I got the result list. And you see we have on the left side the customer folder and on the other side we got subfolders, we got documents, etc. pp. But my idea was I would like to drop that specific document in that customer folder. And the beauty is now, the only thing that I need to do as a user is I need to drop that document and I need to choose a category. I go for correspondence and as you have seen, the properties were filled automatically based on the customer file. So I do not have to add any information. I just drag and drop the document, choose a category, press the button save, and the document is stored in the right business context within my customer file. I can even have a look at the document. If it's stored, I can bring it into the view. That is what we have just seen with the other document as well. You can see it on the top. It says show item. I jump into the document and you see it's a document from Taser, uh, sorry, Taylor and Mason and it's stored in the right folder. But it's not only mails coming in, I receive paperwork as well. So let's jump back to the starting page and you see that there is a tile called batches, which means I would like to, uh, to, to, to digitalize paperwork. I create a new batch and I can just easily drag and drop documents on that batch. In that case, it's drag and drop because uh, I can't show the whole process of digitalization of scanning documents. We skip that. I drop the document on the drop zone and in the back end, the system is uploading that information, classifying that information, working with the document, making sure that the document is full text searchable. You see, there is only one document in that specific case. If I drag and drop multiple documents, it will automatically separate these documents. So there's nothing to do from my side. That's done by develop documents. I can have a look at the document. You can even see uh, some context as a complaint regarding an order. In that case, there is an order number. And on the right side, you could have shortly seen that there was a category pre-chosen already. So the only thing I need to do now is store it in the right context, giving it the system the idea, well, it's customer number uh, 7203. It's a customer number of Mason and Taylor. It's a mandatory field. You can see that with a little star over there. And giving that information, I can just say save and the document, which was paperwork, is digitalized and it's stored in the right context. So we have just added two documents to the system in less than two minutes and these documents are findable and workable for all users that have access to develop documents. So let's switch the role now and let's say I'm the quality manager now. So I'm not the service manager, the customer service manager, I, I do take care of quality management within my company. First thing is it's a complete different role. So maybe I have a complete different focus on using developed documents. So the first thing I would like to show is how I easily can 
optimize my start screen for my personal requirements. You see, maybe as a quality manager, I do not take care of contract management or dossier creation or maybe of the invoice reader because that is not my business. My business is search documents, store documents, maybe create some tasks and from time to time I maybe need to sign documents digitally. So I mark these tiles as my favorites and then I go just to show favorites and you see I have a complete different start screen personalized to my personal requirements. Again, I'm quality manager now and from time to time I have to take care about complaints that reached our company. So what I'm doing now is I do a combined search. I just enter the word complain and this is full text. So the developed documents will now search through the properties and the content on the documents for the word complain and I added the date created on which is part of the properties. So I mixed full text search with property based search to get the right results. I just click search and you already can see it's 10 results. Let me just um, uh, delete the category over here because I just want to show you how I can optimize the result list easily. I'm only interested in the correspondence. I'm not interested in the invoice because uh, normally the invoice does not really um, uh, contain information about the complaint. So I categorize the result list and then I can just focus on the categories uh, that are important for me, which is, for example, correspondence. I open that list, that part list, and then I can just choose a document and I can directly see, oh, well, that is a document that my customer service manager just digitalized. So it contains the order number. I know it's, uh, it's from my customer, Mason and Taylor. So I would like to have more information about that order now to get a better understanding about that complaint, about that overall process, about that business case. So the only thing I have to do right now is just to jump directly out of that document view into the dossier, so into the customer file. And you see, I'm jumping directly into the customer file, Maisel and Taylor Industries, and I can directly have a look into the order files, into the order folders, into uh, the documents. And the thing is what I do now, I compare the order number, which is 14212, and I compare it with the order files I have in my system and I see, well, it's the right customer, yes, but I can't find that order number. So maybe there is something wrong with the document, maybe there is some information missing, maybe the uh, contact person at Mason and Taylor just typed the order number wrong. But I want to be sure that's not my business, so I jump back and I just create a task for my customer service manager and please him to take care of that request. So, um, yeah, I'm the customer service manager as well. Finally, it's a one-man one company, and I just say, please check the order number. I can give it a priority, as it's a complaint in this specific case. Maybe it should be a high priority. And I just say, create task. And that task is then forwarded to that specific person, to that user that I've chosen, so in this specific case to myself. I have worked with a document, I have started a little process, I can work to the other documents as well if I want to, but I would like to do now is just jump back to the start page and give you a view on the task management. So we just take the task management and you see there is a little one uh, 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 listed on the red button there saying, me, well, there is one task for you to complete. I can just open it, jump into it. I can su just have a look at the task and I have some options to work with that specific task. For example, well, I can even just open it a bit better from the view so I have a preview on the document. And I see, well, that is what is uh, requested. I need to check the order number, okay. Maybe it's not my customer, then I have a chance to forward the document. If it is my customer and I work through it, I just complete it and that's it. So it's not only making or storing information in the right place, it's also working with the information smart and smooth and easily. Yeah, the advantages of developed documents at a glance, 
The first thing I would like to show there is Develop Documents is perfectly integrated into your environment. So it doesn't matter whether we work with Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, SAP, Sage, whatsoever, SharePoint, we can connect all the systems to develop documents so they can deliver content uh, to the system, to the central storage area. You can connect it with Teams, with your Office package, with other line of business applications. Next one, develop documents is a kind of customizable standard. We have seen that it was very easy to start with a new tenant because it's ZAS, so it's a standard product. But nevertheless, due to the fact that you can use customized dossiers, like customer dossier, project dossier, supplier dossier, whatever you need in, within your organization to get a right structure of your information, can be customized with developed documents. You can even go for individual workflows within developed documents, invoice processing, purchase to pay, order to cash, HR-related workflows. Never mind, you can create these workflows based on developed documents. And finally, what we have just seen shortly with that invoice reader uh, uh, app, you can even add standard apps out of the developed store. So standardized solutions that are easily deployed, like contract management, digital signature, specific dossier templates, invoice processing, enterprise search, and so on and so on. So uh, it is a standard, yes, but you can customize it on your specific requirements. And finally, developed documents is 100% ZAS. We have seen that it's a very uncomplicated deployment of the service. It's a very easy extension of ads to an existing system. Of course, it is a reduction of your IT uh, operating costs, but not only on the, on the hardware infrastructure side, it's also on the support side because it's all standardized and all optimized. So the whole system is optimized to the database, to the operating system. You don't have to take care of anything with regards to that infrastructure questions. It has a very high flexibility and scalability. You can add users at any time, even if you want to import a mass of documents, not an issue at all. It's highly scalable. And finally, as just mentioned, a perfect mix between standardized solution and customized system. From our perspective, the best thing is convince yourself, test it out for free. You got the 30 days free trial within our store. You see the address over there, jump in and always feel free to, to ask us for questions. We are more than happy to support you and to guide you through your digitalization process. Beside that, thank you very much for listening to that session. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day and enjoy Develop Forum 2021. Bye.